If you have pain right here below your kneecap in your patellar tendon, there are four things that you must do to eliminate it permanently. I'm Dr. Jared, and in this video, I wanna show you what those four things are so you can not only feel better now in your knee, but also prevent that pain from coming back in the future. Because why do you get pain in this area? Well, your quadriceps is four muscles right here in your thigh. They come down, they hook into the top of your kneecap, your kneecap comes down, and then there's a little bit more connective tissue right below your kneecap into the top of your knee. So basically, anything that activates those quad muscles also pulls on that patellar tendon and creates some stress in that area. If that stress is excessive or if the quads are weak, that's what causes pain in that spot. So we see this a lot of time, a lot of times it's referred to as jumper's knee. Uh, we see it a lot in basketball players, volleyball players, weight trainers, runners. Those are the kinds of populations that we see this in. And if that is you, what you may have noticed that is that it's not enough to take one or two weeks off of your activity because a lot of times you get back into that activity and it starts to hurt again. Nothing has changed. And so what we need to do is things that we're going to do some stretches, some exercises, some things that are not only going to help it to feel better now, but actually cause a change in that tendon and in its load bearing ability in order to prevent that pain from coming back in the future. So that's what I want to share with you in this video. They're coming at you right now. Now, step number one is a favorite of the patients and clients that I work with. It results in a pretty significant decrease in pain pretty quickly. We're going to start with a cross friction massage and this is a great way to just break up scar tissue and promote healing in that patellar tendon and like I said most people feel really good after we're done with it and so what we're gonna do is sit with your leg extended um, now I do recommend we grab like a little bit of lotion or some kind of lubricant my personal favorite is this cocoa butter um, helps things to slide and glide really easily we're gonna put that right on the patellar tendon and then with our thumbs we're gonna go across the tendon laterally side to side with some pretty aggressive massage. And so I want you to contact the tendon below the skin, not just sit kind of on top of the skin. We're not sliding over the skin. We're actually aggressively massaging that patellar tendon side to side. Now, the reason we call this a cross friction massage is because the fibers of that patellar tendon run vertically. And so we're gonna go across those fibers to again, break up scar tissue and promote healing. And usually two to three minutes, no more than about five Five minutes on this is what I recommend we start with. Now that is a long time to work over one area with your thumbs. Your thumbs might get tired. What I actually like to do is go get a butter knife. Um, do not use the, the edge or the serrated side or the, the sharp side of the butter knife. Flip it over. We're going to use the dole and the rounded blunt handle. Now with that, we can do that same thing. We can do that cross friction massage with that handle. It is a little more aggressive to your patellar tendon. You might have to work into this, but that does definitely save your thumbs and your fingers. And so again, two to three to about five minutes is what I typically start with. I then like to follow that up with the second step. That's going to be some patellar mobilizations. We just need to get your kneecap moving. My favorite way to do that is we're gonna find the bottom of your kneecap, keep your quad nice and relaxed. With my fingers, I'm gonna grab, kind of hook onto the bottom of that kneecap and then pull the kneecap up towards my hip, up my leg in this direction. Just until we get uh, some mobility through there, you should feel the kneecap move. You might feel a little bit of a stretch to that patellar tendon. We're gonna hold that for about five seconds and then release it and then we're gonna do that a few times. Another thing that I like to do with this is I'll usually go side to side, hold three to five seconds one way, three to five seconds the other way, up three to five seconds. We just want the kneecap to be moving. If it's, if it's stuck or sticky, we just need to promote some mobility through there with those patellar mobilizations. Only like two to three minutes on those. And then we're ready for step number three, which is going to be stretching. Now, um, the patellar tendon, the way we stretch out that patellar tendon is stretch through the quad to pull in through the knee. And so anything to stretch your quad would be indicated at this point. My personal favorite, the easiest way that I feel like to do that is lay down on your side with your affected knee up. You're going to bend that knee up towards your backside with that top hand 
grab your ankle, and then pull the heel into your backside. Now that's a pretty good stretch, but if we wanna take that to the next level, what I wanna do is actually pull my knee back behind my body. And so the further my knee goes back behind my hip, I'm gonna introduce even more of a stretch into that quad, and you'll feel that pull down through that patellar tendon a little bit as well. Hold that for 20 seconds and repeat it three times. Um, alternatively, you can also do this standing up. And so if I stand up, if I grab the top of my foot, and now you'll see again in this position, that's a pretty good stretch. But what I can do is pull that knee back behind my hip. The more extension I introduce into that, the greater the stretch is through that quad and the more that I fill it down in that patellar tendon. 20 seconds repeated three times uh, is a good number to shoot for. And then that brings us to step number four, uh, which has multiple steps to it. We must introduce some strengthening to this, but it has to be kind of in a certain order of things so that we heal it the right way that we don't just exacerbate pain down the road. And so the first thing that I like to start with, and most people are tolerant towards this, is going to be a quad set. And so I'm gonna sit with both legs extended, and then what I wanna do is basically just fire this quad muscle. And so I'm gonna contract the quad. What I like to tell people is push your knee down into the table or down into the floor, whatever it is that you're sitting on. Contract that quad to push that knee down into the floor, the back of your knee down into the floor. Hold that for about five seconds and then release it. So you should really feel this quad muscle contracting almost to the point where it's like cramping up. But because there's no motion going on at the knee, a lot of times that feels okay to that patellar tendon. So it's a good safe way that we can introduce strengthening and training to the quad without increasing pain or inflammation in that patellar tendon. And typically on this, about three sets of 10 to 20 reps is a great number to shoot for. If you wanna take that to the next level, the other thing that I like to do kind of on the beginning beginner side of strengthening would be a straight leg raise. You're going to sit in this semi-reclined position, start with that quad set. So we're going to hit that quad contraction, keep my leg nice and straight as now I lift that heel up off of the floor and then slowly return back down to that starting position. So it makes it a little more dynamic. So I'm dynamic and moving at the hip, but I'm still performing what we would call an isometric contraction down here at the knee, meaning a contraction without movement. And so I'm holding that nice and tight, lifting and lowering. And again, three sets of about 10 to 15 reps is a great number to shoot for. If you've been following along with the video up to this point, chances are that patellar tendon is feeling pretty good. In fact, if that's the case, do me a big favor and hit the thumbs up button on this video. Basically that tells YouTube that this is a good video and then YouTube shows it to more people just like you and then we help a lot more people out. So thank you so much for doing that. But if all we did are the things that have led up to this point, your knee would feel good, but it wouldn't make any long-term progress. We need to get into more aggressive strengthening activities so that we can get you back to higher levels of activity. And that's where the last two kind of groups of exercises come in. Uh, the first thing that I wanna walk you through are some isometric exercises. Again, that's a contraction without movement. And then we're gonna move into some eccentric exercises, um, which have been proven to be a little bit better at promoting healing in tendons. This is what they look like. The first isometric that I like to start with would be a wall sit. You're gonna back up to a wall, your feet come out about a foot or so, and then we're just gonna hinge at the knees, drop down as low as you can comfortably until your thighs are parallel. That's usually about what I try to shoot for, um, but if you can't get down there, just go as low as you can, and then we're gonna hold this. And we're gonna sit in the wall sit for about 45 to 60 seconds. This is a great way that we can really get the quads going. It's a great contraction for the quads, but because of the position, because I'm sat back so far, there's very little stress going on at that patellar tendon. So we can introduce a little bit of pull through the patellar tendon, a ton of strengthening through the quads, and hopefully you start to feel better. 45 seconds three times is a great amount, a great number to shoot for. Now, if that feels okay, have you ever tried a Spanish 
squat before because honestly uh, the goal with patience is to progress from that to the Spanish squat because it's kind of a nightmare and I'm a little bit of a masochist I guess and so what I want to do I've got a big heavy band anchored around my squat rack right here you can get big thick heavy bands if you don't have access to those I've got a couple of my bands here looped around this I've got these linked in the description below this video but what I want you to do is um, step into those bands Put them right below the back of your knee so they're still down here on my kneecap and then back up as far as you can go now in this position we're going to perform a squat or a wall sit so i'm going to drop down hinge at my hips drop down into this wall sit position now this is where i'm going to hang out and i'm going to sit here for as long as i can about 45 seconds 45 to 60 seconds is the typical recommendation in the clinic once again, same position. Because my knees are so far back, there's very little stress going on at that patellar tendon, but oh man, there's a lot of burn in the quads, especially as there's no back support to this. With the wall sit, my back was supported. With this, it definitely is not. You'll see I'm shaking already. Shouldn't have done legs right before this, uh, right before this video. Um, but that, <laughs> I'm gonna come out of it. But that is a great way that we can promote healing in those quads without a ton of stress through the patellar tendon. 45 seconds three times is what I typically recommend on the Spanish squat. Okay, so now, um, again, those were isometrics. Let's get into eccentrics, or basically we're just gonna emphasize the lowering phase of the exercise. The way that I like to do that first is with some box squats. And so I've got a bench here. You can also do a chair or a couch. Basically what we're going for here is form and proper form. Um, you're gonna back up and, and basically we're gonna perform a squat like you're sitting down in the chair. So hinge at the hips, slow down until your bum just touches and then come right back up out of it. What I see a lot of times is people with this issue, when they go to perform this squat, they come here and everything is in the knees first. And then they get down to this point and then that's where they finally include the hips. What we wanna do is train the hips, train the glutes and the quads to take over first before the tendon. And so I wanna break at my hips first, ride my glutes and my quads down instead of my patellar tendon, and then use that to come up out of the squat. Box squats are a great way to do that. You can even emphasize the injured leg by shifting your weight over to that injured side. And so if it were my right leg, I can shift my weight onto my right, ride that one down until I hit and then I can shift my weight back to both of my legs and use that to come out. And so ride that one down nice and slow, shift back and then come out of it. And about 10 to 15 reps three times is a great way to do that one. The last exercise that I have for you is going to be a slow reverse lunge. Your tendons usually respond better to rate of loading, meaning they're more affected by how fast we do an exercise. And so if we drop into a reverse lunge, so if I were doing a reverse lunge on my left leg, right leg comes way back behind me, I'm going to slowly lower down until that right knee just touches or as low as you can pain free and then come up out of that. And so again, slow, slow, slow down, about a three second count down and then about a three second count up is typically what we shoot for. And with that, I recommend 10 reps on each leg repeated three times. If you need more help with your knee pain, I've got you covered here on Tone and Titan. Check out this video for more. Subscribe to my channel right here. Hope this video helps you out. Hope to see you again soon.